All right, welcome back. Um, so lecture 11 today, we are going to look into um, very much uh, electric fields. So quickly, last time we talked about electric charges. So there are fundamentally two charges, uh, positive charges and negative charges. The SI unit for um, charges are in coulombs and uh, the symbol we are using is Q. Um, like charges repel each other, uh, opposite charges attract to each other. The charge is also quanti quantized, quantized, so that means you cannot increase um, just um, charges uh, continuously. So it has to be increased by a quant uh, quantized number, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Okay? So that's a fundamental number. Um, if you are solving for a problem, you can look it up. Um, <clears throat> And mass of electron, mass of proton, mass of neutrons, they are also fundamental numbers. They, if you need them, you can look them up. We also talked about conductors, insulator, and um, what are the differences between the two. So basically for conductors, they have electrons are free to move throughout the material. For insulators, they are not. We talked about the um, two methods of charging an object. So charging by contact and also charging by induction. So which is, means non-contact. Then um, later on, we talk about Coulomb's law, which is to examine the, um, or to calculate the strength between the charges, how much they interact with each other, okay? So F, um, that's a vector form. So with the arrow, arrow on top, is equal to one over four pi epsilon naught. That's a con that's epsilon naught is the constant a point a phi, 10 to the minus 12, Coulomb square over Newton's times meter square. So one over four pi epsilon naught then is a point 99 times 10 to the ninth. In Newton's times meter square divided by um, the um, Coulomb square. So then um, that constant number times Q1, Q2, the absolute values uh, divided by the separation of the two charges square. And in the direction that is connecting the two uh, charges, okay. <clears throat> All right. So it depends on you have like charges or opposite charges. So if you have like charges, then it's um, repulsive. Um, opposite charges you have then um, attractive force, okay. All right. Um, sometimes you have more than two charges in space close to each other. So then for a particular charge, you'll then just add the forces, the electric forces by all other uh, charges on that one up. Okay, so we'll do that in vector form because um, forces are uh, vectors. Okay, so it's the electric force. All right, we'll be looking at one more example. And before we look at electric um, field, which is the ne next topic. So for this example, um, it says that you have two point charges, Q1 and Q2, and they are located at two um, given to the position vectors. Okay, so these cases, they are in three dimensions. Okay, so R uh, for one and two are both given. So it's asking what's the force Q2 on Q1 then. So first we should know these two charges are positive charges, both positive charges. So the force will be, uh, repulsive force, okay? So um, you can kind of just sketch um, this guy, like a 3D X, Y, Z. So X, Y, and Z um, coordinates, okay? So for R1, then it sits at um, X equal to four, um, Y equal to minus two, and then the, <clears throat> Z is F5, okay? So let's see. Um, so if this is X, then four is somewhere here. If this is Y, then it's minus two somewhere there. And then Z is five. So it will be somewhere here for your R1, okay? So that's your R1. <clears throat> Location of your first charge, positive charge. <clears throat> Location of next charge, so it'll be at eight, so somewhere here, and five, so in this way, over here, let's say about here, let's say that's five, that's eight, and then minus nine, so it'll be down to the minus nine somewhere, um, let's just say somewhere here, okay? So over here, so that's another charge. All right, 
So this is where R1 is. And this is where R2 is. <coughs> All right. So I got into the equation, the vector form F one, two, one by two, that's equal to K, my absolute value of Q1, Q2, so Q1, Q2, or you can do, instead of doing K, you can do one over four pi epsilon. And then R of one and two, right, absolute value score, so that vector. And then in the direction of the R one and two with the hat, that's the directional angle of it, okay? All right, so an absolute value. So this uni vector, um, if you remember, is the vector itself divided by the magnitude of it. Okay, so it looks like we need to the to know the vector uh, magnitude of the vector. So r one and two, you can do this is would be then. Um, <clears throat> So we are looking for force on one by two. Okay, so it's gonna to be pointing in that direction. Okay. So you'll be doing actually um so from R2 to R1. So you're going to do actually R1 minus R2 in that case. <clears throat> so then it's 4.0i minus 2.0j plus 5.0k. M minus half, so I'm um, writing in this in two lines, so I can actually do the subtraction uh, easily because they each the com each of the components they line up, okay. Minus nine point zero k direction, okay. So then I'll get my r one two equals four minus eight will be minus four. Minus two minus five will be equal to minus seven. And five minus minus nine, that will be positive 14. Okay, so that's my vector <clears throat> R of um, from two pointing to one. The magnitude of it, it will be square root of the X component square plus the Y component square, so negative plus 14 square. Okay, and they are in meters. Okay, so we'll put the units at the end. So this gives you 16.16 meters, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. So go back here. Um, we can say then F of one, two is equal to K. We can put the numbers. K will be um, 8.99 times 10 to the ninth Newton's meter square over second square, okay? And then times the absolute value of the vector square. So that means it's magnitude square. Okay? So over 16.16 meters and that to be squared. And absolute value of Q1, Q2. Now Q1 and Q2 are both positive. So you don't actually need to do the absolute value. Now just put in Q1 and Q2, 2.0. So micro uh, coolants and 4.0 times 10 to the minus six coolant, micro coolants, okay? And the uni vector. That is this guy. So that is on the at the bottom here is again its magnitude. So 16.16 .16 meters. Okay. On the top, then you'll have this guy down there on the top there. So minus 4.0 i direction minus 7.0 j direction plus 14 in the k direction. Okay. So um you can Calculate for everything, okay? So these all together, um, just without the last part here, it comes to 2.75 times 10 to the minus four Newtons, okay? Then times this directional angle, so times this directional angle, you can, which you can say just the um, univector because uh, this will be giving you a univector of magnitude of one, okay? In that sense, where uni vector, this is equal to minus 4.0 um, i minus 7.0 j plus 14 k, which you can um, say that. Okay. 
So that would be your final answer then, okay? Just in 3D, it's three dimensional, okay? So this is an example of the uh, electric force in three dimensional. All right, so let's go back to the PowerPoint slide. Uh, just one more note here. So we have been talking about point charges, right? Interaction between char point charge. If you have two spherical spheres that is charged and the charge uh, distribute uniformly throughout the sphere, you can also treat them as point charges, okay? So that's just one note on that. And this is similar to uh, gravitational behavior or spherical mass distribution that we learned last semester. All right. So let's move on to the next section on electric field. So we will then actually revisit uh, what is the, main, uh, the gravitational field. So for gravitational force, we know for the two masses, right? It's similar to electric force. It's a constant number times the masses of the two objects and then divide by the separation between them. So they actually have similar forms, okay? So um, in that case, force is equal to M times G, big G will be then, the gravi gravitational field produced by one of the objects, okay? So the larger object there will give you that. So similarly for electric field, and if you look at the, or just, yeah, just wait one step back here. If you look at the gravitational field, we know that it's always pro um, pointing towards the center of it, right? So for example, the earth, right? Everywhere is pointing towards the center of the earth, okay? so then G is a um, vector, we call it gravitational field, which you can calculate is G, the mass of the, the Earth divided by R square and then in the in the vector direction that is towards the center of the point at any point of your interest, okay? So then similarly, if you have a point charge in space, okay? So it will generate then a, a field called electric field. Now in this case, if this is positive charge, then it will, actually the field will pointing outward because um, for electric force, you have um, attractive force or repulsive force. So typically you would use a second charge called test charge here, which is a positive charge you are assuming. So the two positives will repel each other. So at this point, this will point outward at that point will point in that direction. Those are the directions, okay? So then in this case, force can be written in a similar form to M times G, where G is the gravitational field. In this case, force is equal to, now instead of mass, we are using charge of this test charge, okay? So Q of naught times E, which means electric field, okay? And force, according to Coulomb's law, is K, Q, um, Q1, and Q2. So basically the absolute and divided by R squared. So, Q1 being Q, Q2 being Q0 in that sense. So if you compare these two equations, then you can come to this conclusion that E is equal to K absolute value of Q divided by this R square. R will be from your point of interest where the test charge is to the this charge, okay? So E equal to K Q over R square. All right. So similarly, um, so F equal to Q zero times E, so then E equal to F divided by Q zero. So Q charge being uh, a scalar, so then E is a vector because force is a vector, okay? Electric field has a SI unit of Newtons over Coulomb because force is in Newtons and then charge is in Coulomb, okay? So here we use Q naught as the test charge, okay? So it should be positive and then yes, it serves to allow the electric field to be measured. Okay, but it should be small, so it doesn't create a significant force on, the, on any other charge um, within that point charge of the original Q. All right, so because Q could be positive and could be negative, so then force, electric force, is either in the direction that is uh, the same as the electric field or in the opposite direction, depending on the charge, the sign of the charge, okay? So for positive charges, E field and uh, electric force they are in the same direction for negative charges, E field and uh, force, electric force are in opposite directions. For the magnitude of the electric field, you can just use K uh, absolute value Q over R square. Okay, so that's um, the magnitude of it. E equal to K absolute value Q over R square. 
So it depends on this charge will be positive or negative. So for positive charge, the electric field um, points away from the charge in the radial direction, okay? And for the negative charge here, so this is for the, again, for the positive charge and this is for the negative charge. So the negative charge, um, the electric field will be pointing towards it because you can imagine if you have a positive charge here as your test charge, right? It's going to be attractive to the sky. So then E field for the negative charge will be towards, okay? The negative charge also in the radial uh, direction. And if you have multiple charges in space, then the electric field at a particular point of interest should be summation of the electric field by each of that point charge as a source, okay? So E for the I's point charge at point of interest P, okay, equal to KQI over RIP score in that uh, radial direction R hat IP. So then you sum up for all the point charges you have, like I charges could be like five, seven, whatever, however number that, um, whatever number that could be, okay? So let's take a look on one example. So this one says you have two point charges lie on the X axis. A charge of 2.40 picocoulomb is at the origin. And a charge of minus 4.80 picocoulomb is at X equal to minus 10.0 centimeter. What third charge should be placed at x equal to 20.0 centimeter so that the total electric field at x equal to 10.0 centimeters is zero, okay? So we should um, sketch the problem and try to visualize it first, okay? So let's um, do that. So it says, yeah, two charges. So this is the x axis origin. There's one at origin. Okay, so let's say origin somewhere here. And this is positive. Let's say it's positive. So I'm going to just put a positive there. Um and then there's so this is 2.4. 2.40 pico coolant. There's a charge at minus 10. So minus 10, let's say somewhere here, minus 10 centimeter. We could say this is in centimeter, so we don't need that centimeter. Um, but this one is negative, so negative. Okay. Minus 4.8 picocoulomb. It wants you to place a third charge at x equal to 20. So this charge as equal to 20, it's a Q here, okay? It's looking for that charge. So then X equal to 10 here, and this is your point of interest E is equal to zero. Okay, so that's what it wants. So let's take a look on the electric field at this 10 centimeter, X equal to 10 centimeter from the original two charges, right? By this one should be pointing away. So we're going to call that E1. And by this one, negative is pointing towards the negative. So in that direction. Okay. So E of two, maybe let's say it this way. So it really depends on E1 and E2, right? In order for the total to be equal to zero. So if E1 is greater, then this guy is going to be um making the electric field at this point in this direction into the left, right? So then to um, this E3 and E2 will make E1 become zero. If E2 is greater, then this one will be making this charge, this electric field at this point by this third charge to be going in that direction, okay? So it depends on E1 and E2. So we should just look at the magnitude for E1 and E2 first and then see which one is greater, okay? So for E1, is equal to k q1, right, over r square by the one. So that is k times 2.40 picocoulomb, right, divided by r1 is this guy, so 10 centimeter, 10 centimeter and square, okay? So that's e1. Similarly for e2, e2 is k um, q2, 
So we'll, we should just do absolute values, okay? Just because we are just looking for the magnitude. So <clears throat> that is Q times 4.80 picocoulombs over R2 will be from here to there. So that's 20, right? 10 plus 10, 20. So it's 20, which means two times 10 centimeter squared, okay? Now, look at these two, we can actually uh, more, just manipulate with the second one a little bit. So the second one on the numerator here, this is two times uh, 2.40 pico coolant, right? Because 4.8 is twice of 2.4. And divide by here, you have should have two to the square and 10 to the square. So two to the square becomes four times 10 centimeter to the square. So it looks like this guy, <clears throat> four over two, right? Now it becomes just half, just one half of K, 2.40 pico coolant on top divided by 10 centimeter square. So it looks like your E1 is greater than E2, right? Just the magnitude Y, E1 is greater than E2. So then you can say, okay, E1 is greater than E2. So E3, E by the charge is three on this one should be in this direction, in this direction, okay? So this should be then E3. So that tells you then the charge on this guy should be positive, okay? So it's going to, the third charge Q3 is going to be positive. So Q3 is going to be greater than zero. So now let's determine what will be that magnitude, okay? So E2 plus E3 should be equal to E1. E2, the magnitude is half of E1. And so that means E3 should be also half of that, right? So E3 should be equal to E2 then. So E3, the magnitude should be equal to E2 and then should be equal to one half K. 2.40 PC pico coolants over 10.0 centimeter to the square. E3, its magnitude should be also equal to KQ3, right? The absolute value divided by R3 square. Okay, so that should be K because Q3 is positive, so just Q3. And that's 10 centimeter square, right? So E3 is this guy, it's also that guy. So we will just set those two equal to each other. Then you can solve for uh, Q3. So we are going to say, okay, so one half K 2.40 PC over 10.0 centimeter to the square equals to K Q3 over 10.0 centimeter to the square. Okay, so KK will cancel. 10 centimeter square will cancel. So your Q3 will be half of 2.4 pico, right? So that means your Q3 is equal to then 1.20 pico coolant, okay? So that's on this one. Let's see. All right. Okay, so back to the slides. Now, if you have charges in the field, in the electric field, okay? So there will be then electric force on the charged particle, right? So if there's force on the particle, there will be oscillation of the particle. So um, the motion of the charged particle will be um, uh, altered if it has original velocity, okay? So in that sense. So it depends on um, uh, which direction your initial velocity is. So this is something very similar to projectile motion, right? You have original velocity of object and then due to the gravitational field, it's going to be def deflected or going down and going up, okay? So in the same way. In this case, the oscillation is not gravitational oscillation, but the oscillation is equal to the, the net force the net electric force divided by the mass, okay? So unless otherwise stated, we will actually just focus on electric force only because electric force, most of the time compared to the gravitational force is much bigger, okay? So then electric force will be the only thing you'll be con considering in this case. All right, so force, 
Electric force equal to Q times E. So then it's Q times E over the mass, okay? So let's take a look on one example here. <clears throat> this one says, <clears throat> let's say electron has an initial velocity of 2.00 times 10 to the six meters per second in the positive x direction. It enters um, a region that has uniform electric field in the positive y direction, E equal to 300 uh, newtons per cent per coolant. It says A, find the oscillation, B, how long does it take, and for, for the electron to travel 10 centimeters in the x direction, and then C, through what angle, um, and in what direction will be the electron be deflected, okay? So let's take a look on that. Okay, so the x direction is in the horizontal to the right, and then y will be upward, okay, positive. Oh, actually it's negative. It's in the um in the downward direction. So the y is in this direction as the problem stated, right? So E field is in a positive y direction, which in the figure E field is in a downward direction. Okay. So let's find the oscillation of the elect um the electron. So the force for the electron it should be equal to Q um times the electric field. In this case, Q is E, right? It's minus E times E. So minus 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. And the electric field is 300 newtons over coulombs, and that's in the y direction, okay? Or in the j direction. We will just use j. Or you can do y with the hat if you want, okay? So this then, uh, <clears throat> is minus 4.8 times 10 to the minus 17 newtons, okay, in the y direction, in the j direction, or y direction. So it's actually uh, upward, okay? Now, the oscillation A, which will be F over mass, this is the electron, so mass of the electron, which is a constant number, you'll um, actually look it up, okay? minus 17 newtons in the j direction divided by, or electron 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilogram. Okay, so this gives you minus of 5.269 10 to the 13 meters per second square in the j direction. Okay, so that's your oscillation. B, how long does it take for the electron to travel 10 centimeters in the x direction? So it has initial velocity in the x direction, right? And this oscillation is only in the y direction. So x direction, its motion is not going to be affected. So time t should be just equal to change in x direction over velocity in the x direction initially, because there's no oscillation in the x direction. So 10 centimeter times 10 to the minus two meters over the velocity of 2.00 initially 10 to the six meters per second. That's in X direction, okay? So this gives you uh, 5.0 times 10 to the minus eight then seconds, okay? So that's how much time it takes. C, through what angle does this um, electron being deflected while it travel? So it, you can sketch this, right? So initially it's going in this direction. Um, Velocity is in a minus y direction, y positive being down, so then it goes in that direction. So at this point, when you look at the velocity of electrons, right, it should have a x component, it should have a y component. So v of x, and then this will be v of y, actually negative, you know, negative y direction, but that's that, okay? So the directional angle, then you will need to have um, v of y over v of x, okay, um, to calculate that. So 
um, we will calculate what will be the velocity in the y direction, which should be just equal to a in the y direction times t. A in the y direction is that guy, so minus 5.269 times 10 to the 13 meters per second square multiplied by 5.0 times 10 to the minus 8 second. Okay. So that gives you minus up 2.635, 10 to the 6 meters per second. All right. Then angle say that equals to tangent inverse of the uh, Vy over Vx, which is tangent inverse of minus 2.635 times 10 to the 6 meters per second over 2.00 times 10 to the 6 meters per second, okay? So that gives you minus 52.8 degrees, okay? So um, because upwards negative direction, so that is in the negative direction, okay? Because Vx is still positive, so you don't have to add 180, all right? So that's how much it's been deflected. All right, let's go back to the PowerPoint slide. Um, I think we'll we'll just stop here for today. Okay, we will come to the next section next time. All right. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.